Hey everybody, this is Hunter Williams. I hope you are doing amazing wherever you are at in the world today. Today's video is gonna be everything you need to know about AOD9604, which is a fat loss peptide that seems to be making a resurgent. This was a little bit of an older one. I guess it's probably three or four years old. This was one that was kind of before the popularity of the GLP ones that people would use for fat loss. So today I'm just gonna teach you everything you need to know about it where it came from, what it does, what dosage you use, how to use it, all that good stuff. So uh, that's what we're going to jump into today. So first of all, if you're here, thank you so much uh, for checking out the channel. It's been growing so much lately. Maybe YouTube lifted the shadow ban or whatever. Uh, but I do want to preface by saying if you have questions about this, please drop them in the comments if the comments are there. Know that if the comments are off, YouTube has been turning off a lot of my comments lately, which is kind of annoying, but I guess they don't want the videos to trend or rank an algorithm. So just know if the comments are off, I do my best to turn them back on, but for whatever reason, whatever reason they toy with my comments and turn them off so um and as always you can download the peptide cheat sheet down below to sign up for my email list and i'll send you a pdf with the peptide cheat sheet i don't think aod is on there as far as a dosing and stuff we're going to talk about that today and how you would use it um when it comes to dosing and administration and everything like that so that's what we're going to be talking about today it's gonna be everything you need to know about aod in hopefully 20 minutes or less so i'm going to break that down so what I'm going to do is go over and share my screen and let's get started. Oh yeah. And before I start, you may notice a different background. So I actually just moved into a new house. So this will be my setup from now on. We'll probably have all my books and stuff behind me once I get those like unpacked and everything, but I am in a new house. So this is going to be the new studio. So hopefully the sound the lighting and all that good stuff uh, is to your liking. And if it's not, I'm sorry, but uh, anyway, let's hop over to the screen and talk about AOD 9604. All right, this is a comprehensive overview of AOD 9604. So we're just going to talk about the origin mechanisms, benefits, side effects, and dosage, as always, and some other peptides that I would recommend you stack with AOD if you are going to use it. So let's look at what we've got today. So AOD 9604, which actually stands for anti-obesity drug 9604, was developed as a fragment of the human growth hormone uh, amino acid chain. So the peptide was inspired by the fat burdening properties of human growth hormone, which I can attest to work very well. Uh, but basically, it was originally um, conducted as research by Monash University in Australia, and it consists of the amino acids 176 to 191 at the C terminus of HGH. So uh, it was designed to mimic the fat metabolism properties of human growth hormone without affecting blood sugar levels or promoting growth. So one of the beefs people have with human growth hormone itself is that it's going to raise your blood sugar and then potentially cause you to grow too much or cause cancerous growth or something like that, which most of which is not true. Uh, there are really, really good benefits to supplementing with human growth hormone. But the, the objective in designing this peptide was to take all of the fat burning properties of human growth hormone and put them into one peptide without any of the negative side effects. So um, there's been various stages of clinical trials and uh, there's been a lot of interest and, uh, you know, like pursuit of this from the pharmaceutical industry. Um, but it was kind of just uh, over or foreshadowed or excuse me, overshadowed by a lot of the GLP-1. So it kind of came on, it caught fire, and then the GLP-1s came and they just ended up being better at suppressing people's appetite. Um, so how does it work? So it basically mimics the natural growth hormone in or mimics natural growth hormone in regulating fat metabolism without the adverse effects on insulin sensitivity. So it works by uh, promoting the breakdown of fats in the body, which is known as lipolysis. It also helps with lipogenesis inhibition. So it prevents the transformation of non-fat food materials into body fat, think carbohydrates. So uh, it also increases the body's energy expenditure, which aids in weight loss. It also helps with cartilage regeneration. So it does help with that the same way that human growth hormone would help with cartilage regeneration. Um, it does not affect muscle mass or blood sugar levels, which uh, kind of makes it different from HGH in that sense because HGH is definitely going to help you build muscle, um, which I think everybody should want to do. But uh, in relation to maybe some of the GLP-1s, which – supposedly cause muscle loss, really what causes muscle loss is not eating enough protein and not resistance training. But um, as opposed to those, you definitely, if just pound for pound, you're not going to see as much muscle loss as you would from like a GLP-1 peptide. And then we've got receptor inter interactions that act on specific receptors related to fat loss and metabolism. Um, and so the thought was to basically just give a safer alternative to traditional growth hormone therapy, uh, specifically for fat loss. So, um, 
What are the benefits? So obviously we have weight loss. So it's primarily used for significant potential in promoting weight loss. Uh, it also helps with fat reduction. So it works especially effective in reducing stubborn abdominal fat, especially around the belly area. Then we've got uh, metabolic rate. So it helps enhance the metabolic rate, contributing to overall calorie burn. It helps with appetite regulation. So it may influence appetite and food intake. Some people will say that growth hormone increases their appetite. So it's kind of like it will, the you know, it's a catch-22 because it, Increases fat loss, but then it'll increase your appetite as well. So it's like, do you really burn more fat because you're hungry, so you eat more? Uh, it also helps with cardiovascular health, so it's going to improve cardiovascular health and reduce the risk of heart disease, which obviously is still the number one killer of people. Uh, it improves mood, so it may contribute to improved mood and mental well-being. Um, and obviously, if you are thinner, you're going to feel better about yourself. Uh, it can provide a boost of energy and combat fatigue. Uh, it could also help with better sleep. It's going to help reduce stress and help with the immune system, all of which you would really say are just benefits of growth hormone itself. But because it's kind of like a fragment of human growth hormone, um, it's going to help do some of those things. Obviously not at the level that actual human growth hormone will. But if you're going to use it, that is probably going to be some of the benefits you have. So Moving along, what are the side effects? So this one, there really is no side effects. I mean, it was designed to have basically like a side effect free uh, experience for users, which obviously every drug would want, but not everyone does. But um, basically, you're just going to have the typical, like with every peptide that I'll talk about, the typical side effects. You've got injection site reactions, pain, red, redness, or swelling of the injection site. You've got headaches. Uh, some people just get like headaches or flushing, then nausea, uh, and then fatigue. So the fatigue is interesting because that's something that usually in the first two to three weeks of HGH supplementation at, of you know human growth hormone itself, people experience fatigue. And what's happening is because you're raising growth hormone and raising IGF-1 levels, uh, you're putting the body in a state to it was like when it was a baby. And if you think about being a baby, you ate and you slept. And because your IGF, the reason is because your IGF one levels were high, so high because you were growing, and uh, you know all these HGH peptides, HGH itself, uh, AOD for example, tend to make people more tired in the first couple of weeks because there is cellular remodeling going on where your body's kind of going to, through this transformation process, and in doing so, it needs to rest. It's not a bad thing. It's not you know like just a the side effect for the sake of making you tired. Um, it's basically like helping your body re, renew and regenerate. So. But other than that, you know, typical side effects of peptides, just, you know, like pain, swelling, itchiness at the site, nausea, headaches, flushing. But other than that, really nothing with this specific one. Um, then we've got uh, dosing. So what is the dosing? I would start off at 250 micrograms per day in a fasted state. Now, you can titrate that up to 500 micrograms per day, but I think 250 micrograms per day is a really, really good um, you know, starting point for people. This is done via subcutaneous injection, so you basically just reconstitute the vial. Inject 250 micrograms per day. I would do five days on, two days off. That's just always kind of like the rule of thumb with growth hormone peptides, but you could do it for you know, like you know, every single day if you wanted to. Um, you could do this twice a day. So if you wanted to do 500 micrograms, you could do 250 morning and 250 evening. I think that would probably benefit you a little bit more as it relates to sleep. Um, not that it's going to make you sleepy, but it will help you sleep deeper if you take it at night. So you could do, you know, AM and PM, but if you're only going to do one, I would say do the AM. Um, so you just kind of kind of play with it and see from there. But I think 250 to 500 for most people is going to be the sweet spot. And then as always with all peptides, you want to cycle on and cycle off. So you want to use this for eight weeks and then come off for eight weeks. And the reason being, again, you could use this the whole year and arguably derive good benefits from it. But as always with peptides, you're going to get an antibody buildup response. And typically somewhere in like eight to 12 weeks is when the body will really start to like kick in. And it's just, you're just going to have to up the dose or come off of it for it to stay effective. And you could up the dose, but again, you're going to have to keep upping and keep upping and keep upping the dose to eventually like where it just becomes cost prohibitive to keep using it. Um, and you need to cycle off. So I would say like use it for eight weeks on and eight weeks off. And that leads me to my next point, which is stacking peptides because people say, well, what do I do in the eight weeks off? So Here's what we are going to do. So let me move my screen around. Uh, the first one I would do it with is terzapatide. So being a growth hormone peptide, I always recommend people use a growth hormone peptide with terzapatide to help support the fat loss and help support muscle maintenance during your fat loss phase. 
Um, so the terzapatide is going to enhance weight loss effects and improve metabolic function. You could also use ipamorelin alongside AOD. So this complements AOD by further promoting fat loss and aiding in recovery. And then as always, you can use BPC-157. That's just going to help, especially if you're exercising more, help keep your joints and tendons and ligaments uh, feeling good um, for joint health and recovery. So, you know, as far as the stacking strategy goes, you could use all three of those together. You know, you can look up the dosing because I have videos on all those different peptides there, but they just work synergistically. So like if I were going to use AOD, I would definitely not just use it alone. Like I would just not run that as the one peptide. Um, again, if you're using it, you're probably using it for fat loss. So I'd use it along to appetite. You know, originally semaglutide was used along AOD. That was very common to use AOD along semaglutide, but now we have terzapatide, so I think it's better. So if you were going to use it, I'd definitely throw in terzapatide, especially with fat loss being the goal. Um, and then, you know, if you come off for eight weeks, you know, you could use AOD for eight weeks and then terzapatide for eight weeks, or you could use AOD for eight weeks and then apomrelin for eight weeks. So, you know, you got to you gotta end up being the one that makes that call yourself, but you could use some of these other fat loss peptides while you are off of AOD. So um, obviously you, you kind of have to like play with the dosing and stuff as it relates to that. So um, that's pretty much it. So this was everything you needed to know about AOD. Let me pull down my screen. So that was everything you know, need to know about AOD. If you want my kind of opinion, I think it's, it's, not, it's not a worthless peptide. I just think there's better tools in our tool belt that we can use. And it seems like this one's been making a resurgence lately just because I think across the internet now, Jay Campbell and I probably have the largest sample size of people that we talk to and coach on peptides. And we've been getting a lot of questions about AOD lately. So I wanted to make a video on it and I just kind of want to like lay out my thoughts on it. Um, it's good. It's useful. If you're new to peptides, you're definitely going to get a benefit from it. I just think there's other ones out there. I think there's appetite's going to be better for fat loss. I think, you know, ipamorelin and testamorelin, those are going to be better for the growth hormone effects that help create fat loss and help with muscle maintenance and muscle gain and everything. So I think there's just better ones out there. But if you wanted like something to throw in to like maybe get a boost as it relates to fat loss, or definitely throw in AOD. You could definitely do that. But I just think there's ones out there if you're going to spend the money you know, and you're going to inject yourself that you're going to get better bang for your buck. So uh, that's my thoughts. Again, it's it's not bad, but there's just things out there that I think, you know, like on a scale of one to 10, you know, like terz appetite, if that's like a nine out of 10 for fat loss, AOD is probably like a six or seven. But if you use both of them together, you can get really good benefits. So uh, that's my thoughts on AOD. You know, if you have questions about this, like reconstituting, you know, any of that stuff, uh, drop them below. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Um, and as always, don't forget to check out the peptide cheat sheets on for my email list. I've also got my supplement sources links. If you want the discount codes and everything, uh, for people that are companies that I recommend, um, to get peptides from, you can do that below. So appreciate you guys much love out there and I will talk to you next time. Peace.